The popular video app TikTok has announced plans to withdraw from Hong Kong as social media companies grapple with the ramifications of a sweeping new national security law. Alex Morgan in the Cube has a story. Ollie used the word popular, that, that definitely sums up TikTok. And during lockdown, I think it's fair to say, right the way across Europe, a lot of people discovered TikTok. Many people going home living with their parents became viral sensations with dance crazes and the like. So here it is. This is what TikTok uh, looks like. This here is the French version, but it's hugely popular around the world. It's owned by Dance Bytes, that is a Chinese company, but the app itself isn't available in mainland China. And now that company, perhaps quite quick to try and distance themselves from the Beijing authorities, trying to make themselves look like there is that distance there, uh, saying that they will be with drawing from Hong Kong over this new national security law. Now, another quick thing, they're under dual pressure because uh, Mike Pompeo of the United States is hinting they could face uh, uh, some sort of censorship in the United States as well. But as I say, they're quick to pull out of Hong Kong. What they said uh, in a statement was it was due to the current situation. But they're not the only ones by any means. Let's bring you up some of the other statements. We've had, uh, yes, TikTok, but also LinkedIn, Twitter, WhatsApp, all of them saying they're pausing requests from the Hong Kong authorities to access user data. Why? Well, let's bring up some of the key uh, details of this new security law that we've only really found out in the last couple of days because it was passed, let's not forget, before anybody could see it. Some of the key things it can do, it can give police the opportunity to search without a warrant in what they say are extreme circumstances. But look at this here. It puts the obligation on internet service providers, on these social media companies, to remove messages that could be breaching the law. And at the moment, we've seen a lot of the terms like secession, separatism, these kind of very broad terms. Uh, use. So a lot of people weighing up now, these companies weighing up how exactly they're going to implement uh, their user policies to stay in line with this new law. And finally, look at this, fines of up to uh, 13,000, roughly 13,000 US dollars and up to six months in jail, the authorities saying, could be there not just for users, but for internet service providers and their staff if they were to fail to comply with this Article 43 of this huge national security law. Huge jolly, but one we only started seeing the details in uh, of once it came into force. But the chief executive of Hong Kong mirroring perhaps what we've seen from Chinese ambassadors around the world, saying this is an internal matter for Hong Kong. It's nothing to do with external companies or other countries. And this is what Carrie Lam had to say when questioned about it on Tuesday. Surely this is not doom and gloom for Hong Kong. I'm sure with the passage of time and efforts and, and, in fact, and the facts being laid out, uh, confidence will grow in one country, two systems, and in Hong Kong's future. It's not doom and gloom, but for TikTok, it's uh, the end of their time in Hong Kong. They're moving out. But for these other companies as well, sites, let's not forget, like Google and Twitter, that are allowed in Hong Kong that are not allowed in the mainland. Well, now they're pausing cooperation with Hong Kong authorities. There's a big question here, Ollie, about the future these companies can enjoy. And in fact, the future of Internet freedoms in Hong Kong. Now this new sweeping legislation has come into force. Alex, thanks very much for that. Well, as we were just hearing there from Alex, international technology companies are mulling their futures in Hong Kong. But what about the international's response from the international community? Well, joining me now from New York is Leon Levy, who's a senior analyst at the political risk consultancy Eurasia Group. Thanks very much for speaking with us here. You know, we've heard that the UK is going to offer passports or citizenship to up to 3 million people in Hong Kong. Taiwan is doing something similar. But apart from that, there hasn't been a huge international response just yet. That's right. We haven't really seen any concrete policy steps beyond uh, a lot of the things that you just described. There have been some more policy steps that have been taken uh, at the margins, but really it's telling just how much of a lack of international response there has been to sort of confront China directly on these national security issues. Uh, and it's understandable from the perspective of many of these countries who are also trying to maintain uh, economic relations with China as well and would rather not wade too deeply into this. But at what point do countries have to take a stand and say, actually, this is something which has crossed a red line for us without having to consider the economic impact of potential sanctions coming from Beijing? Well, there's a lot of vagueness that's left in this law, and that's done by purpose. That gives uh, Beijing wiggle room, but it also provides wiggle room 
for uh, other international con uh, countries to monitor the situation and take uh, steps accordingly. The purpose of this law from Beijing's perspective, as it was stated, though it's not necessarily uh, written out as explicitly, is to tamp down the protesters and to make sure that legislative uh, council elections in September really go their way. That is what they are focused on at the time being. And at least from what we hear out of China, they do not want this to impact commercial interests uh, in the country. Though, as uh, we've seen, particularly when it comes with technological companies, it already has started to. Now, we were reporting on Monday about the UK introducing a new sanctions list, its first independent list since leaving the European Union. Surprising, I think, to some analysts was the fact that China was not on there, considering that the United Kingdom has such a vested interest in Hong Kong. Do you think that the UK, uh, the US, other countries will start to sanction some key figures from Beijing and from China? We've already seen some targeted uh, sanctions, but a lot depends on the next three months. Again, this is a more a political document than it is a legal document, and the full scope of it comes with implementation. And as uh, you know, others have mentioned, uh, the details are still coming out. People are processing what this actually means, but what it really means depends on what China makes it mean over the next two to three months. And so everybody will be monitoring the situation very closely and take steps accordingly. So what we're in at the moment then is an international wait and see, see how far these laws are implemented. And if it is deemed to be too much, then the international community might potentially take a harsher line. Yes, but underlining the word potentially, Right. Uh, as we've seen, a lot of these countries have lots of other uh, considerations for themselves. Many of them are digging themselves out of uh, the current coronavirus uh, epidemic. Uh, the UK has its own COVID uh, headaches in addition to looming Brexit. And so all these countries are going to wait and see what China is going to do. And when it uh, crosses the line, if it does, these countries will deem it, they will have to weigh the cost and benefit, how much they are willing to take a strong line against China and how much of an economic hit uh, they are willing to take uh, as a result of that. Leon Levy, Senior Analyst, uh, Political Risk Consultancy, Eurasia Group, thank you very much indeed.